G'day everyone, B Asian Dad here. We're gonna do the in-depth review of this Lenovo ThinkPad E14 Gen 2. Now this one I've got here is the AMD version and it is a 14 inch business class laptop. Now being part of a ThinkPad series, it's made to be quite durable, which is great. And being the E series is the entry model to the business class laptops. But later you find out this entry model is not that entry at all. I actually find it really good, but more on that later. What we'll do is we'll have a little bit of a peek of the internals a little bit later in the video. So stick around for that. And we'll also look at the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well as its features as well. Now I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the different sections that you might be interested in. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the left hand side of the computer, we've got the USB-C port, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2. Now this supports power delivery. So that's where you actually plug in the power adapter and you also plug in docking stations as well. And then we've got the USB type A port, that's USB 3.2 Gen 1 and this supports power sharing as well. And then we've got the HDMI port which is version 1.4 and then we've got the headphone jack. Looking on the right hand side we've got the security lock slot and then we've got the RJ45 and that's on a lever system here. And then we've got the USB type A port, which is USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. What this computer can be configured with. Now this is the AMD version, so we'll just go through the AMD processor. So it can be configured with either the Ryzen 3, which runs off four cores, or the Ryzen 5, which this one is, and that is six cores. And there's also the Ryzen 7 as well, which runs off eight cores. Now as for RAM wise, it can go up to a maximum capacity of 24 gigs of RAM. So it can go up to eight gigs soldered to the system board, and then there's a dim slot for 16 gigs. Now, my advice is for the RAM is to, if you really do do a bit of 3D graphics, is to make sure you've got dual channels. So get half of it on the system board and the other half on the dim slot, and you will find the actual 3D graphics is greatly improved, nearly double the performance. So definitely look into that when you get this computer configured with. As for storage wise, it's got two slots for M.2, so you can put two SSD hard drives in there. And as for the graphics, it's of course using integrated graphics, and this one is the AMD Radon graphics, and don't be surprised, it is actually pretty decent. And as for the display wise, there are actually two options for displays for this one here, and they both are full HD options, and of course they are not touch as well and there are two different panel types now the TN panel type it is rated to 220 nits of brightness and then there is a WVA version which is rated to 250 nits of brightness which is what I've got right here and we'll have a little bit of check on the display panel a little bit later in the video and you'll find there's a very interesting thing about the display panel especially when it's on battery the computer does come with a 720p webcam and there are two versions of it. This one here is just a normal 720p webcam and you'll see there's a privacy shutter so it's just made a little flick of a switch and you'll see a physical shutter go over it and pretty much it will just cover the webcam so if it actually turns on you can't really see anything, which is great. The other version is the IR version, and that's really good for if you're using Windows Hello. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the E14. Now this is the video and audio unedited, so you can actually hear and see what it looks like. Now I've actually got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights turned on, and I've also got my down lights from this room, which is the ambient light. Now I'm going to actually turn off my studio light so you can see what it looks like with just the ambient light. And pretty much I've got two downlights in front of me. I've got two downlights behind me and the two downlights in front of me is quite far away. So there's actually not much light hitting my face at the moment. So this is kind of like very dark. Now in an office environment, you probably get a little bit better lighting than what I've got at the moment. So this is kind of what it looks like. And I'll just turn my studio light back on so you can see what it looks like. And of course, with better lighting, better quality picture. Now I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this webcam. Love to hear what it is. Put a comment below. As for the keyboard, it of course houses the good old strong ThinkPad keyboard and if you've seen my previous videos, you know I love this keyboard a lot. It has very good tactile feel and good key travel as well as the finish of the each keys is quite smooth. So that's nice and it's got good spacing in between as well. So it's fantastic for typing as well. Now it is quite responsive even if you press it on the side. So you can see it's actually very responsive to that as well. Now of course they're in the middle, it's still the track point or the cheese spot and you've got the three supporting buttons below the space key. And then we've got the trackpad here and again it is quite smooth matte feel to it as well and does 
doesn't have any problems if you've got moist hands as well for that. And of course it's hinged at the top, so it's only mechanical at the bottom here, so you can still depress it at the bottom here. Now there is a fingerprint scanner built into the power button, and you can see the power button's quite nicely lit with a nice little LED glow, so that's kind of nice, so it's not that crazy distracting, and also the keyboard is backlit as well, so that's just function. Spacebar will activate the three different modes off medium and high. And as for the build construction of this computer here, now the top of the display, the lid here, is made of aluminium, and as for the bottom and the sides, it is pretty much plastic all the way through, but it is quite durable. I see there's not much flex there involved as well, and as for the keyboard, it's actually quite stiff here, so definitely good, good construction here for sure, you won't have any problems with that as well. And it does take a bit of fingerprints, unfortunately, for the whole entire thing, so it does take a bit of a fingerprint, but I think Carl will get used to that, for, especially for black as well. And as for the palm rest, you've got a nice decent amount of palm rest, and you're not gonna be overhanging on the wrist too bad, so, I mean, sorry, the upper part of your wrist, so you actually, as you type, you actually find it still quite comfortable as well too, so not really overhanging there, so definitely, the palm rest is a bit of a matte sort of plastic feel to it. It's actually not too bad at all. And you'll see in the temperature test, it's not bad at all. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the computer. Now, when I measured out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure it at a peak of 78.8 decibels. So that's a bit quiet compared to a lot of other business laptops. So you may find yourself a little bit struggling when you're outdoors listening to this order, or if you're in a cafe doing a presentation, it may be a little bit of a struggle there, but I think you'll still be able to do it fine, but you may find it's on a bit of a quiet side of things. But else it's actually all right. As for the sound quality wise, it actually, this one actually did surprise me. It actually is not bad at all, especially for, as a business laptop. It has a bit of bass, the mids were there, and as for the highs, it did unfortunately distort a little bit when you had it on a maximum volume. But else, it was actually quite balanced and had a pretty good acoustic, surprising from two little small speakers. So not bad at all, especially this is an entry model. This actually for me was better than the T-Series or the ThinkPads, so that's pretty good there for the speakers. The computer comes with a 65 watt power adapter and it's actually quite small and it does actually charge by the USB-C cable. Now as for the battery, it houses a 45 watt hour battery and it does support rapid charge and what that means is it can charge from the battery from 0 to 80% charge in one hour's time. I did test out the battery life of this Ryzen 5 version and I did it in the four different modes. Now in best performance mode it managed to get an hour and 40 minutes and in better performance mode it managed to get an hour and 50 minutes so only a little bit better and in better battery life mode it managed to get seven hours and in battery saving mode, it managed to get nine hours and 15 minutes. And in media mode, I had Wi-Fi on and streaming YouTube videos and had the screen brightness at 50% as well as the speakers at 50% and it managed to get eight hours and 15 minutes. As of time of recording this video, when I actually performed the tests, I did find an issue and I thought I might just give you a heads up on this. And that is when I this computer goes into hibernation mode, it actually won't be able to wake it itself up. It seems to have an issue with that. So you may need to actually turn off the hibernation of this computer. And I have reported to Lenovo, and hopefully they'll actually put a BIOS update and then we'll actually have that fixed. So hopefully that'll come out soon. But just for those who are actually purchasing very soon or now, uh, you might actually you want to turn off that hibernation feature, which is basically deep sleep. Um, you might actually find that very have issues trying to self wake itself up. And if you do, pretty much just hold down the power key into about five or ten seconds, it will actually completely kill off and then you can start it up again. I uh, just want to give you a heads up on that. That's all. The weight of the Lenovo ThinkPad E14 Gen 2 is. 1.58 kilos, add in the 65 watt power adapter, becomes a total weight of 1.95 kilos. When I tested out the temperatures and fan noise of this computer, when I put this computer on load, I found most of the hottest area of the computer is located near the center of the keyboard, sitting around at the Y key, and also on the top right of the computer as well, around about where the home key is. And that's unsurprising because that's where the exhaust vent is. Now, from my unboxing video, I saw the other vent on the left-hand side of the computer, and that was 
the inlet vent so it is pretty much where it starts to suck in the air so you'll find also in the measurement it's not as hot there as well but as the center of the keyboard you'll find even then it's not that crazy hot so it was actually quite hard to actually differentiate which ones was going to be the hottest area now when i performed the measurements my ambient temperature was 22 degrees celsius and i took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 31 degrees celsius and the fan noise was 31 decibels so that's pretty much quiet and that's pretty much cold as well and then i put the computer on 20 percent load and again the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at a peak of 31 degrees celsius and the fan noise was still at 31 decibels so pretty much it hasn't really done very much at all so it still kept itself quiet which is great and then i put the computer on 50 percent load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 37 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise it measured in a maximum of 32 decibels so still quite quiet but it's spun up a little bit it's quite quiet still and as for the temperature you don't really feel that much and then i put the computer on 100 percent load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 42.5 degrees celsius and the fan noise measured in a maximum of 33 decibels so still quite quiet surprisingly and then i also measured the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 41 degrees celsius but most of the areas was around about hottest area was about 40 degrees celsius and of course the fan noise was 33 decibels so as you can see this computer is not hot at all even on most of the time when you're doing averages up to 50 percent it's not that hot neither at all you can and even at 100 percent you can quite happily put your hand down you feel a little warm and that's about it it's not that hot at all it's not burning hot this for once is a very very cool computer when you're actually working on even though at measuring at 41 degrees celsius you can probably put this on your lap uh, but i still don't, wouldn't advise you to put this on lap but you probably could and wouldn't feel too distressed from it uh, it will feel a little bit warm but not too distressed where it actually will be burning you so that's a bit of a surprise how well the temperatures are on this ryzen 5 version of this computer i am very impressed by that let's have a look at the internals first off you need to unscrew the seven screws that's holding the back cover in after that you need a tool to pry this thing open now this is not an easy job this one i'm just using my daughter's play-doh scalpel tool seems to work very well for this hopefully later on i'll upgrade it but my advice is to actually come in from the corners and then go slowly slice it down to on the front and then on the corner slowly slice it through the sides as well and then just repeat this again from the other side so slowly from the corner slowly slice it from the front and slowly slice it from the back and then after you should be able to lift this open now i've actually pre-undone this to speed up some time and this is what the internals kind of look like now we can straight away see we've got the 45 watt hour battery and to actually undo the battery it's held in by five screws here and this is the little tab you can pretty much pull it down and then you should be able to lift this thing up so that's kind of what you see now we've got the coin battery right here but you don't need to actually undo that you can pretty much just undo it from here if need be so i'll just put this one back in here place here and straight away this is the first slot of ssd hard drive here so m.2 and then the, there is the second ssd hard drive which is the other m.2 that's so you got two to actually work off of course this one's for only for the smaller ones and this one's for the larger ones here and then we've got the wi-fi card here and right underneath this heat shield is i'm just prying open ready and it is where the sold in slot is for the ram upgrades and that's pretty much all there is to the internals as for the display panel it is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and as for the finish of the display panel it is an anti-glare matte feel to the display panel so it's not a glossy one it's one of those matte feel as for the bezel wise you'll see it's actually i would say medium narrow it's not crazy narrow all the way through but it is nice and narrow in the sides and as from the top and bottom it's decently narrow enough but it's not like super thick neither and it's not super thin like some of the other computers around testing out the color gamut coverage of the full hd 250 nit display it measured in at 56.4 percent srgb coverage and 39 percent adobe rgb coverage and 40 percent dci p3 coverage
I found a very interesting thing while I was testing out the brightness of a display panel. And that is, when this computer is on battery, it will limit the, the brightness of the display panel. Now at the moment it's running on battery and I've got it at its maximum brightness and it is only going up to a maximum of 88 per candle per square meter, which is 88 nits of brightness. Now just to show you, it's actually reading from that, I'm just gonna pull this off so you can see that current change. And I'll just put it back on so it's, I'll just slowly put that back on properly and it's going to read around about 88 to 89 candle per screen anyway. So when I plug the power back in and you'll see I'm not going to change any things at all. I'm just going to plug it back in and you'll slowly see this will automatically ram itself back up to its rated nit of brightness. Now this one's rated to 250 nits of brightness. As you can see this just slowly bringing itself up to the brightness for it and you'll go past hopefully about 250. I know it's gone past 250, it's up to 276 candle per screen or 275 candle per screen, which is 275 nits of brightness. So I've got an extra 25 nits of brightness, fantastic. But it will be on power. And then once I just take this off power, just pull the power cable and you'll see it actually automatically ramp itself back down to 88 nits of brightness at its maximum. Uh, I've shined lights over it just to see if there's any sort of thing to do with ambient light, but nope, it doesn't really change that. Maximum it can go on battery is 88 nits or 89 nits of brightness. So this is a bit of a worry when you're actually out and about, and especially in daylight, it won't be a very bright screen at all. So hopefully we'll find some information from Lenovo to see if we can actually get this thing changed. I did perform the benchmarks for this particular computer here. Now this one is configured with a Ryzen 5 4500U processor with eight gigs of RAM and 250 gig SSD hard drive. And here are the pass mark scores, 3D mark, PC mark 10, crystal disc mark, Geekbench, and MATLAB 2020B, inspect view pref. This computer I have been very impressed by, especially how cool this runs as well as how quiet it runs and it's got very good performance as well and especially for the price it is amazing so and the build construction is great very durable computer here i can easily recommend this lenovo thinkpad e14 gen 2 amd version it's really really good computer uh, especially i am pretty blown by this in a way if you find this video informative enjoyed it or even just to support my channel hit that like button for me. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button as well. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.